and switch screens and make you presenter. Okay, great. All right, everyone, have a great webinar. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Um, today I'm going to present an uh, overview of SSAS administration with C-Sharp, and AMO stands for Analysis Management Objects. Um, so just briefly, um, what that is, is it's a assembly or a, a set of tools that's integrated into the .NET framework, and we can access that, and while I'm going to use C-Sharp today, as that's my preferred language, it's also accessible through uh, Visual Basic, of course. Um, and it's essentially just a way we can connect to our analysis services um, server and our cubes and our, our databases there, and we can perform different management uh, functions on them, as well as design, really. I mean, it gives us a, a very large range of capabilities. So that's what that is. Um, looks like we've got some people who are a little bit more familiar with C Sharp, so, but, but we've also got quite a few who are relatively new. So as time allows, I'm going to spend just a little bit more time focusing on some of the C-sharp, um, more basic elements, as well as the actual SSAS uh, AMO topic. So what we're going to cover today is, uh, first thing is importing the references to the project so we can actually access AMO. Uh, then we're going to create our server connection. We're going to create partitions. We're going to process those partitions. And um, we're also going to detach and attach a database in read-only mode uh, as an example for a scale-out operation. Um, and that's going to cover some of the um, patterns that you'll be able to follow, even if you aren't necessarily detaching and attaching databases. Uh, it's going to give you an example of how to execute some of your XML A on your uh, server. And don't worry, we won't, we've got a, a couple of slides I want to um, make sure that I stay on track and that we give you the information that that'll be, these will be up uh, on my blog as well. Uh, so you can down that, download it later and hopefully if, if you're just looking for one thing, you can go to that instead of watching the whole video again. Um, so first things that we do when we want to get going with AMOs, we need to add the analysis services DLL to our project. Um, that's typically going to be located in your SQL Server directory. Uh, you need to install the SDK when you're Installing SQL Server, or you can revisit that install later with the uh, installation media. Uh, just as an example, your x86 SQL 2014 path to that DLL will be C program files x86, Microsoft SQL Server slash 110 slash SDK slash assemblies, and the name of it is Microsoft.AnalysisServices.DLL. And we'll see how that's important and why we need to know where that is in uh, just a moment. So uh, just a quick screenshot here of where, where that is in your environment, what it looks like if you aren't familiar with adding project references. Uh, on the left, we see the Solution Explorer. So if you're working in a C-sharp project, uh, you'll see that one of the uh, folders that we have expanded right there is the references folder and I've got highlighted the Microsoft.analysis services. Uh, once we add that essentially we gain access in our project to all of the capabilities of the AMO um, assembly. If we don't add it then you're going to get a lot of um, compile errors and your red squigglies showing you that it's not able to access um, those built-in functions and objects. Um, and the other things, if you can do this, this is something you can either do as a standalone uh, .NET application or you could do it in the script task within SSIS. So if you're using the SSIS um, script task, you will still need to add the reference, but you'll do that after you open the script task window. Uh, you, so instead of looking in your SSIS uh, SSDT uh, interface, you will instead go to your task, open it, click the edit script, and then you'll be able to get this same sort of view and add your reference. Um, another note with that is that if you're using VB uh, Visual Basic, then your references, that references folder is hidden by default. And all you need to do is you'll just click the um, show all files item, and I'll show you that in the um, Visual Studio once we switch over to it. Um, 
and I will get my pointer loaded up at that time. But just be aware that if you start a VB project and you don't see that references, uh, it's just hidden by default and you can access it by clicking show all files. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out, especially if you're new to AMO, um, and if you haven't seen this, this was something that um, I honestly didn't know about till a little while ago, um, and that is the object browser. Um, so after you've added that assembly to your project, um, and you want to know what are the capabilities. Now, what, what did I just add to my project? Uh, you can just, in that same Solution Explorer, double-click the assembly reference, uh, or you can right-click and view an object browser. And what this gives you is the screen we see right here, and it just gives you a, a nice long list of all the objects, functions, and methods, and properties that Analysis Services, your AMO assembly, gives you. Um, and so if you're, you know, the, the, <laughs> the biggest issue sometimes with Googling is if you don't know what term you're looking for. Um, so this gives you kind of a different route to go through and explore what capabilities exist in AMO and if they're maybe named something differently than you expected. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side you've got all of our different things like uh, aggregations and all kinds of different um, elements and uh, functions, classes that we can access to control our aggregations in SSAS. And then on the right side, we get a little bit more details, some links to documentation, and a summary. So it's a really nice way to kind of explore what's available in AMO. Um, Microsoft documentation, of course, is out there. Uh, it's pretty good, but it's not, I wouldn't say, um, as extensive as some of the other things. And the number of blog posts and that covering this is uh, a little bit less, so this can be helpful. So uh, I also wanted to cover quickly design considerations with AMO before we, we dig too far into it. Um, one of those is the ill at ease, as we sometimes refer to them, so things like maintainability, expandability, versatility. Uh, we want to make sure that if we elect to go the AMO route for our management of the server or um, creation of cubes, partitions, stuff like that, that we're creating a solution that's not introducing uh, more of a maintenance headache, um, that we're not limiting ourselves in the way that we create this application uh, in terms of our, for, you know, uh, the inevitable change requests and uh, issues that arise in, in how the business expects their analysis to perform and what, excuse me, when they expect it to perform. Uh, the other thing that we like to see and I would suggest is that um, a lot of BI developers and BI teams have um, less exposure um, to programming and you know if you're not the one that's maintaining it we just want to keep it simple uh, make sure that we add those comments even if it seems a little bit um, excessive I know that especially if, if folks are uh, a little bit more advanced with their programming you might not feel the need to um, comment some of the things that you're doing but uh, you know I, I think my attitude especially with given that sort of BI audience would be I'd rather have a comment there and not have to read it or not want to read it rather than to not have a comment and, and desperately need or want to read it. So um, keep that in mind as you're developing these. Uh, the other thing is, like I said, you can incorporate AMO into SSIS script tasks. So there's a consideration of whether you want to bake it into an SSIS package or it should be a standalone application. Uh, each has a a, a use case, you know, each of them may have its advantage at different times, um, and I think we'll probably see, you might, hopefully you'll start to get a better idea of, of when the two might be um, beneficial, uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, and then the other thing is one of the main reasons we use AMO is it gives us a tremendous amount of dynamic capabilities, um, meaning that we can use much more complex logic to determine how we create our cube, how we process, when we process partitions. Um, and AMO goes far beyond just partitions. We can look at security. We can look at um, aggregations, as we mentioned. So one of the things then is how do we control that, that process? How do we feed variables and control how that's executing? I think one of my I guess I would say my preferred 
versions would be a control table. Um, just get a little example here, just a, a mock-up for demonstration purposes. But um, what that gives you is it gives you a nice way that you can both feed your variables into the program. So in this case, we've got a process database, a process cube, a partition, um, as well as a status so that we can pick up what, what needs to be processed or taken care of. Um, so we've, we've got a way to feed variables into our application, but we've also got then a nice log for troubleshooting and uh, answering any questions of when something happened, which process has failed, which one is queued, all of that. Um, you can also hard code, of course, if you've got a simpler solution, um, and we'll see a lot of hard code in my demonstration today just since it's simply for demonstration purposes. Um, uh, so sometimes that's, that's acceptable. If you don't have much change, if it's a simple application, um, hard-coded may work for you. Um, you can also conceivably open up to application access. Um, so if you want to get a little bit more advanced with your application, maybe it will actually interact with a vendor's application or a third-party application in your environment to um, trigger your processes and send in your variables. Um, and then you've also got an alternative to AMO, of course. And that comes in the form of XMLA scripts that you can execute against your cubes um, and SSIS tasks. So there's also, I think, other designs and possibilities in terms of how you set up your cube for some of these dynamic processing. And um, I, I keep going back to that. That's the one I've seen the most, I think, is one of the most powerful. Um, but obviously, there's plenty of other uh, opportunities in AMO for controlling your cubes. Uh, so just continuing with the design, um, there's command line and console progress. So we'll see this in my um, example today. Uh, I use the command line to feed variables into the application, and that then controls which server I'm connecting to and which cube I'm using. Um, and I'm also going to write out progress messages to the console, since again, like I said, I, I understand in this environment it's for presentation. Uh, in yours, one of the things that's nice with C-sharp or something like this is you can create your own logging. So you might have a log file or you might output your application's progress to a SQL table. And um, you know, for something like this, custom code, especially when your environment changes or something happens, uh, it can be really helpful to have that uh, output data to go back for troubleshooting. Um, the other thing is that we'll see is I've generalized the SSAS control class, um, and it's called by my main program. And um, it's a custom control. It's, it's user-defined. It's just a class that I've created. And um, you can see the code right there that's got a comment there. Like I said, it's um, <laughs> if you're a little bit more advanced with programming, that's probably an unnecessary comment. doesn't add a whole lot. At the same time, um, like I said, I would, in this situation with, like I said, BI teams that may not have as much programming, it's probably better to have than not. Um, and that design, breaking that apart, makes use of our object-oriented um, architecture in these languages. And it gives you the ability to put your SSAS tasks, which are probably not going to change. Your, the things that are in a cube, partitions, aggregations, security, that's, that's not going to change much. It's not going to change what you do with those. You either process, you drop them, you create them. Um, so it keeps that a little bit separated from your actual business logic or your process logic, which gives you some reusability capabilities, and it also keeps your, your code a little bit cleaner. Um, so just about to get into the code, and we'll, uh, we'll just um, step through the code and show you each element of what's happening and what it's causing to happen in the analysis services um, cube. Uh, the first thing you need to do is we've imported the assembly into the project. Now we actually need to import it into our code. So the, we do that by using Microsoft.AnalysisServices in our header. Uh, that would be an import if you're using Visual Basic. Uh, you want to set up your variables, good naming conventions. Um, we've got really good debugging. Um, the common language runtime does not, is not uh, negatively affected by longer names, so go ahead and use those, those good long names so people know, and you know, <laughs> potentially months later, what exactly is happening. Um, like I said, in, in my application, we can see I'm using the um, command line past parameters. 
Um, I'm also using the progress messages, like I said, so we'll see the console, that right line. And what's nice there is not only do we get some feedback as to what's happening, but we get the actual value as well. So while we can step through in the debugger, this gives, gives us another opportunity to understand how our program is, is um, working and to monitor that as it's happening. And then another item I wanted to mention is I can see that when I'm done with a connection, I disconnect and I dispose of that connection object. So just good programming practice. Um, and of course, when we're not connected, when we don't need to be connected to a server, if we've got other logic happening in our program after the um, cube commands have been sent out, we want to disconnect. Um, that being said, I have seen environments where connection and disconnection is in a loop. And we really don't want that. There's a certain amount of overhead with um, each connect and disconnect. So if you're going to continue to operate on the server, it's best to maintain that connection or at least make a decision as to um, you know, your cost to benefit ratio of, of keeping that connection. So like I said, I've seen, I, I mentioned that because I've seen some applications where a tremendous number of connections and disconnections were happening and caused some severe performance issues. Okay, um, and then just one last note, if you're new to um, debugging a console application and so that you know um, how I'm going to be running through this. Um, in the Solution Explorer we can right click on the solution or the project name, go down to properties, and in the debug tab in the lower left you can see we can supply the command line arguments. Um, so those are the two that as we go through this are going to be supplied, my um, offload SSIS server and my SQL dev um, primary server. And so that's, every time this executes, those will be sent to the application. All right, so we'll switch over to code. Um, just as an overview before we dig into the step-by-step -step execution, uh, it's an example program. It's going to create and process different partitions, and it is using AdventureWorks. I know it's not the most exciting, but uh, we want to make it easy to understand and really just focus on the code. Um, and then the second step is that the process will copy files from an offload analysis services server to production um, in a read-only mode. So with that, let me switch over to my VM. Um, and one thing I also wanted to point out quickly is that um, if you are using um, any of the, this is just Express for 2013 for Windows, so you can get a free download of this. You don't need a, a license or anything. Um, I'm not exactly sure what licenses or licensing you may need if you create apps with this and put it in production, so <laughs> not qualified to speak to that part. Um, but the Visual Studio 2013 can be downloaded for free, and you can also, with your um, standard Microsoft account, um, get access to a TFS solution out in the cloud. So I've actually got my solution um, in my own TFS um, server that's connected to the Microsoft Cloud, so it's kind of a fun um, way to get used to TFS on your own as well as to actually just keep some, some good source control. And if you'll excuse me for just a moment, I need to try and find where my um, pointing devices, and you'll see, I apologize, my VM has some issues with uh, <laughs> Oracle VirtualBox and Microsoft. Um, okay. So to start with, in our Solution Explorer, you can see that I've got two projects in my solution. We've got the SSAS example, um, and this is actually one that I did recently for a client. Um, it's part of the solution. Uh, and it's in Visual Basic, which I wouldn't prefer, but um, might be nice for the presentation anyway, because we get two flavors. Um, and that one's a little bit more created for an actual production environment, as opposed to our uh, SSAS partitions here, which is going to um, include the example code. And we, as we can see, we have program.cs, and that's the main program. Um, and then my second class that I created is just called SSAS control. So we will take a look at program first. Um, we can also see to begin with that 
we've imported Microsoft Dev Analysis Services. And I'm sorry, let me also show you over here that in our references we have Microsoft Dev Analysis Services as well. Uh, and you can see already that in the VB example we do not have, it appears we don't have any references. However, if we click on our Show All Files up here in the Solution Explorer, uh, you'll see that it appears right there. So it's just the way that Visual Basic has been designed and they have, for whatever reason, defaulted to not having that there. And that does not have it, so I'm just going to go ahead and go through the process. So if we right-click on References and click Add Reference, uh, we'll get all kinds of different um, opportunities and options. If we just go to Browse and I click Browse, I've already got it um, navigated to the location that I've got my DLL, so just double click and hit OK. We'll see that it's checked there. And now we see that it's added to our project. And since we're in VB, I'm just going to go ahead and click that Show Files again and, and hide that. All right, so um, back to the program. So the first thing we have is we've got our static void main. Uh, we accept our string arguments. Um, in this case, it's, it's optional. You can parse server names. Like I said, um, at this point, depending on how you've set your application up, um, we have control table options, command lines. Um, you know, you could use a file architecture, another application. All we need to do is just have some way to feed in the um, variables that we're going to use in our control flow that we set up. And that control flow, as you know, with, with uh, programming language is tremendously powerful. Um, the next thing I do is I actually create the SSAS control. Um, like I said, that's a custom control. I named that. I made it. Um, it's nothing special. It just is a way to kind of group together the AMO-specific uh, commands that I'm going to be executing. Next, we've got a uh, console write line. Um, so just letting us know what, what's happening during the execution of the program or connecting to an SSAS server. And in this case, that's the processing server. And you can see with that highlighting that, that came in, uh, it was defined as a string, and it's our first argument. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a server object. And I've named that server, and we're just going to do, um, uh, we're just going to use our, we're actually calling over to uh, my SSAS control. And I'm going to create a server connect, and we're passing it that name of the processing server. Um, one thing you might notice here, if you are a little bit more advanced with this, is that this is probably not the most optimal design. Um, probably the biggest thing is the passing of the server connection or the server object around between these two. Um, but I just want to show some different approaches and capabilities that we have. So when that calls here, we'll go over to SSAS control. I'm just going to collapse all of these and we can see what is in here. Um, so one of the first functions that we have is server connect. Um, and we've passed in a string, so that's just the server name. And we're going to create a server object here. And uh, if you're not familiar with it, what we have, and this is available, a similar sort of thing is available in T-SQL as well, the try-catch. Um, and essentially what we're saying is that instead of simply connecting to a server, we need to try to. Because um, in the process of doing something like that, there's a lot of possibility for failures, uh, whether it be network or some other type of authentication or um, technical issue that could prevent that from happening. So we don't want to just connect because if it doesn't work, it could crash our application. Uh, instead, we're going to try, and then we've got two catch statements if there are any issues. The first one will catch an AMO exception, um, and then I'm just going to write the diagnostics debug window, AMO exception, and E.2 string. So whatever the text is that that um, error contains, we'll put out to our debug window. Um, if you have other logging, like say a control table or something like that, you know you could put a lot more um, information here if you wanted. Uh, the next one is we catch general exceptions, and uh, same thing, just create a way to access that error. Um, each time we set the server to null, and otherwise, if the try works correctly, then it'll return our server object, which will take us back to program. Uh, the next thing I do here is you'll see that this is a um, hard-coded solution, like I said, just for demonstration purposes. Um, of course, you could do this, and you probably would prefer to do this in a dynamic fashion, and we will see that in the VB 
example. Um, in this case, I created a dictionary, which consists of a key and a value, in this case, an integer and a string. I've named it categories, and the idea there is that we're going to work with the AdventureWorks um, product um, uh, hierarchy. Uh, and part of the reason that I've included the um, integers here is that I know what the uh, key values are in the cube and the name as well. Um, if, like I said, if you're doing this dynamic, you could probably still determine that. Um, this depends on your environment, how much, like I said, in terms of design considerations, how much code you want um, in terms of ensuring that you have adequate error handling and um, adaptability for change requests in the future. Um, anyways, here what we do is we add four categories, bikes, components, clothing, and accessories, and that's what our partitions are going to be made on. Um, then we've got a loop process um, just for each of the dictionary entries and categories. We're going to give some feedback, and um, frankly, most of this has just been general C-sharp at this point, so now we're truly going to make use of the ammo objects themselves. Uh, we're going to go to create dynamic internet sales partitions, which is just a, um, a function that I created over in that SSAS control. So again, separating the AMO and analysis services control from our um, process logic over here. Um, in this case, we're going to send it the server, uh, name of the data, uh, database that we're going to connect to, the cube, and then in each case, I'm going to send the um, key value, and then, or well, in this case, the key, and then the value. So we'll step over to SSAS control, and we have our create dynamic internet sales partitions, which accepts all of our um, inputs here. Uh, and just a quick note there, I'll make all of this code and the um, presentation available on on my blog if, if you want to revisit and look in more detail. Um, so just a quick note that these are hard-coded and that may not be ideal. But the process, once we get into this AMO and we need to, we want to connect to our uh, analysis services server, is first we create a database object. Um, so create the database object. Um, we're going to use our server reference so we know which server we're connecting to. Uh, we're going to get the collection of databases that exists on that server. And then an AMO um, function that we have available is find by name. So we just simply str submit a um, string in here, so just whatever our database name is, and it's going to find that database. Um, if there's any potential that it wouldn't find that database, this might be another place to have a little bit more error handling code. Um, in this case, I'm fairly confident that that's not going to happen, though, so I didn't put that in. Uh, next thing is after the database, we want to create our cube. Um, so once we do that, same sort of thing as we're in our database object now, and we get the collection of cubes. And again, we use the same um, function. You'll see this a lot as the find by name. So again, we just pass the string name of the cube in. And since we've done that, then same sort of process, we want to drill down to the measure group level. So within our cube object now, we're going to get the group of measure groups, and we're going to find by name. And in this case, I've hard-coded. Again, like I said, if, if you want, if you're in that sort of environment, you probably want to uh, make that deny, dynamic. But at the same time, if it's just one cube and you're doing something relatively simple, like maybe just creating your partitions, uh, it may not need that. Uh, so now that we have our, we're down at the measure group level, what we want to start getting into is partitions. So we will create a partition object. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that to Again, our measure group, list of partitions, and we're going to find by name. And at this point now, it's category that we're looking for. So, like I said, pretty simple um, steps to follow once you get to this point. It's just kind of the same way that you would browse an SSMS, database, cube, measure group, and then our partition. Um, at this point, I make a query binding. And as long as the partition is not null, then I'm going to load that query binding. Um, so this is an example, I said this is not necessarily the best approach if you're actually going to implement this in your environment. I think the VB will show a little bit better approach, um, but it is an approach that shows you uh, a lot more of the functionality that is available to you here. 
Um, so what we're going to say is if the partition is not null, then we're going to get that partition's query binding. And then we're actually going to also output that to the console. Um, the reason we need to check if it's not null is we don't want to crash our program with the null reference exception if the partition hasn't been created yet. Um, and one of the goals that I would like to see with, with AMO is the ability to run it um, simply after a cube deploy. Um, the VB project you will see has some items in it where the cube has to be processed once before you can actually connect with AMO. And that doesn't have to be, just depends on, again, um, the way you want to design your project. Um, in this case, if the partition is not equal null, we're just going to drop it. Um, and this is obviously very small data set size, and just for example, so we just want to make sure that we start with a fresh um, set here. So the next thing we're going to do is we've got our partition object. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our measure group, partitions, and we're going to add our new partition. And that's based off of that category name. Uh, we're going to set the storage mode to MOLAP. And we're going to give it, um, this is our partition object again, so we're going to set the source of that partition object to a new query binding. Um, and just in case we have any folks that are not familiar with the initial setup for your partitions, let me just open up SSDT and just show you real quick how we can switch and how you can see that uh, query botting in your analysis services project. So this is SSDT, just standard um, AS cube, and we'll go over to our partitions tab. And as you can see, so in these you can see that this is a query binding already. And I'm going to find, so um, for our sales reason, all you need to do is in the source area, we have our source, and there's a little ellipsis here. Uh, if we click that, we can see that this is set to a table binding right now. Uh, all we need to do is click query binding, and it'll switch to the query that it's going to create anyway, and it gives you a look where statement at this point. So essentially, this uh, interface is the SSDT version of what we're creating over in C Sharp right now, which is that query binding. Um, what we've done here then is we've created our data sources. Um, part of that is we need to find our, um, uh, let's see, yep, so our, our database um, data source so we know where this query is going to go, where it's going to execute against, and then we just simply insert the query. Um, you'll notice in this case I put a top and I believe this is the maximum for a big int. Um, should not reach that in this solution, probably not in most. Um, and then we've got an order by. So the order by allows this top to execute, otherwise SSAS will not honor the um, ordering. It'll throw some errors. And the idea with that is that you're going to get some optimal um, behind the scenes SSAS file creation in terms of the compression and how that data is actually being created, the, the SSAS files. So that's, that's the um, ordering by. Other than that, it's just a pretty simple um, query here, really. Um, you can see we've got a couple of joins. Um, we've got our list of values. Um, a conversion here might want to fix that somewhere else in our, our solution before we get to this point. Um, and all we've done, just simply just added in this um, manner, a primarily a text and string concatenation but we do have a couple of instances where we have variables inserted as well. And that's how we get um, that dynamic processing capability in here. So in this case, we can see that we have um, where c.product category key equals, and then we've got our escape characters and our string concatenation, and we've added in uh, the variable of the PK that I've assigned, so just an integer. Um, so we can ensure that each time we create these, the partition query is going to say the same, except for what it's restricting that partition to. Um, and of course, if you're doing that string concatenation, you can make this more or less complex. And um, in the VB, I'll show you, you can also get a um, baseline query. So we don't always have to have this query in the code. What's nice is we can actually make the code dynamic enough to read what the base partition that we created in the analysis services cube is, and then it'll base all of the additional partitions off of that while making them um, 
dynamic by adding in a couple of items, typically in, of course, the where clause there. Um, then the last thing is we set the slice. Analysis services should do this for us, but we're going to go ahead and uh, add that as well, just to make sure that it knows exactly uh, what this partition should be primarily sliced by. Um, and then we are going to add in annotations, and essentially all we're doing is we're just adding in the definition of our category and that primary key. Once we've got that, what we need to do is we need to run an update. So we've created all of this, but we need to make the server recognize that this is actually out there and added to its list of partitions in the measure group. And once that is done, once it's updated, then we can run a process on it. So in this case, it's a process full. Um, if you wanted to do something else, let's see if it'll give me some, oh. there we go. So um, you've got your IntelliSense as well. Um, so if you're not exactly sure what all of your options are, you know, thankfully Visual Studio will help you out there. Um, so a lot of different options that you have in terms of setting up your processing structure. And so it gives you additional control through that. And once that completes, then we're back through, and it'll just loop through and create those partitions. Uh, what I think what I'd like to do then is we'll walk through this program fairly quickly with the debugger, so I can show you the um, analysis services effect here, and then we'll go over the um, copying from one server to another and the visual basic. Uh, another thing, if, if you're at all new, if we have anybody that's new to the um, partitioning, um, what I've got here is a measure group I've just slightly renamed and recreated the um, internet sales, so I don't completely ruin my uh, adventure works. Um, and as soon as you drill into that, you've got our partition, so you can see that's already set up, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these. Um, So we're back in our program, and I'm just going to go ahead and start the debugger, and I'm actually also going to uh, skip down to where we're actually interacting with our AMO, and um, so in this loop, I'll set a breakpoint. If you haven't worked with uh, C-sharp debugging here, um, breakpoint's the same sort of idea as if you used it in SSIS. It'll just stop the execution, let us step through. Um, so I'm going to set it at this for each loop where we're going to step through and create those um, things. Uh, so we can see that the console popped up real quick there, and we got our first message connecting to SSIS server. Um, just a nice sort of validation if we don't want to do the debug part, but we want to go back and make sure that we are connecting to the server that we're expecting. Um, then we're going to step into this. So um, again, if you're not familiar with the um, debugging, and I think it's at least half the folks it looks like probably are not. Um, we've got the locals window down here where we can look and see what values our variables hold. Um, so we've got processing server and production server. And you can see that, uh, as I showed before, since we set up the default command line arguments, um, that's what has gone in and populated these two from the command line. Um, and then uh, this is a different way to access. You can access the args as well. Um, and then over here on the gutter, we've got just an icon where our break was and what step we are in the code, and it'll highlight the um, pertinent step there. So we'll step in, and we've got our categories was the dictionary list that was already created. So we're going to step through that. Uh, you can see, again, uh, creating and processing our partition bikes popped up. If we weren't running this in the debug, um, but we were running it manually, uh, we want to know, you know where, where we're at in the application. So you can see we switched over to the SSIS control, and we've passed in all of our names. Uh, if you hover over any of your icons, or your not icons, um, variable names here, uh, it'll pop up a nice little window and tell you exactly what the value is. Um, so it's both in the locals window as well as here. And if there's one that you're trying to track or you want to keep a hold of, uh, you can just hit that little pin, and it'll keep it there, and you can get rid of it as well. So... 
quick note on that. So again, we're going to create our database connection. We're going to find it by name. We're going to connect to our cube, create a cube object here, and find that by name. And same thing, we're going to find our measure group by name. Uh, create a partition, and we're going to find that one by name as well. Uh, this one should be null now, so we'll skip right over getting that query binding and, and printing it out to the console. That's all that was doing. Um, it is not, uh, it is equal to null, so we won't drop it. And now we're down at the point, so now we're going to add our partition. Um, again, we're going to do that based off category. We can see here the first one that it sent through was bikes. Uh, set the storage mode to molamp. At our query binding, we can see right here that our PK is set to 1. So we're going to ultimately get our um, query binding uh, query is going to be the string concatenation, which will include where product category equals 1. Uh, then we're going to set our slice to the same thing. So the same PK is going to be used for the slice in this case. Uh, we're going to add our annotations to get that metadata on the cube, uh, the partition. Uh, we're going to make sure that the server is updated, so we have to have that update so that the server actually recognizes that this partition is part of the measure groups. And once that's complete, we can process it. And we got an error. That's interesting. I just ran this last night and didn't make a change since, so of course it's always fun when <laughs> yeah, trying to show it to people less than 24 hours later and you get an, an error like that. Um, but hopefully I showed you, uh, I don't want to spend our time trying to debug that right now, um, the general process of how we'd step through with the AMO access. Um, relatively simple, I think, honestly, like I said, database cube measure group partition. Um, then in this case, we have a hard-coded uh, query that we've got some slight dynamic uh, additions to. And that is essentially it for this. Uh, let me take you back to the program. Um, just remove that. And what you can see then is that we also, I've got to comment it out because it's, um, I don't really want to deal with um, the actual file transfers and changing of the servers during this. We don't have time for that. Um, but one of the other options in AMO is that you can also put in your XMLA commands and send those to the server as well. Um, so that's all that this is, is essentially um, what we've done is if we go over here, um, let's see, um, so if you want, if you don't know the XMLA, if you're not very familiar with that, you can just go over to your cube if it's deployed, and you can just create the XMLA um, via scripting it out. Um, and so it's going to give you all the behind the scenes XMLA that was created for this dynamic internet sales partition. Uh, you can also do that with some of your, um, let's see, some of your other options as well. And, okay. Yep. So um, as soon as you get that, then you can just come over here, and all you need to do, actually, let me, uh, let's see here. Here we are. Um, so if we go up to databases, we click this synchronize. So there's not a way to specifically uh, script it out, but if we choose, uh, this is why I didn't want to get into this. I don't have it set up, I'm afraid. I apologize. Um, as we go through this wizard, uh, one of the last steps that you'll get before you click on the execute is you have the option to script it out. Um, so if you just, anything that you can go through a wizard for in SSIS, once you get to that end, it should give you the option to script the XMLA. Um, and that's all you need to do is just script that for, say, a synchronize. And that's just going to give you exactly what you want here. Um, and that's the XMLA in its entirety that will move our adventure works over to a different data uh, server. Um, and like I said, all you need to do is we've got a sync command um, string that I've set up. We connect to the server. Um, same sort of methodology with that, and then we just execute the command on that server. So um, with that server, we have the execute AMO command here, and we pass it a XML script. And so that's the other approach that we can implement in the C-sharp AMO. 
Um, that is something else, so if all you're doing is passing XMLA, that's something you might consider using in SSIS, which also has that capability to pass XMLA commands to your SSAS server. Um, so with that, that covers the entirety of this demonstration um, program. And um, what I'd like to do now then is we'll switch over, I'll open the VB up. And with this one now, um, so like I said, it's Visual Basic. I'd like to go through it relatively quickly, but it'll show you just the um, same process happens in VB, really. It's just the um, uh, AS server name. Uh, you can see that this one's actually being used within an SSIS um, script components. So we're making use of the SSIS variables to get our SSIS server name. Um, so this is giving you a little bit more dynamic capability in terms of project parameters and um, feeding that in. Um, we're going to connect to our server again, connect to a database, connect to a cube, um, and then in this case, instead of having a hard-coded query, we're going to go through the measure group, um, same sort of thing. So um, in this case also, we're not just going to one measure group, we're iterating through every single measure group in the cube. Um, and what we've got, we still have a little bit of hard-coding, but essentially we've got two measure groups that are going to be partitioned at the month level. Um, and so we get the list, we create a object that's going to have a list of partitions that need to be created. Um, we get our measure group base query and name. So what we're doing here then is, um, like I said, instead of hard coding that query, we're going to go to the object measure group partitions, um, get by name as opposed to find by name. Uh, we're going to send in the variable that we've also been using that we're iterating through for the measure group and we're going to get the source and essentially that's going to give us the query and the way that we've set this up in analysis services is that we have all of everything set to a query binding and the base level partition is set to something that we're not that's not going to actually capture data so we might have it set to negative one or 1900 um, you probably if, if your users are going to be analyzing the unknown members you don't want to put those in their own um, partition so just make sure that whatever your query is, it's something that you can expect with it when you get into here, um, but it's also something that's not going to capture any of your analysis data and put it in that sort of dummy partition. Um, so we'll get the source of that, that partition that's defined in analysis services with sort of dummy um, query filter on it. And then what we do is just a simple um, embedded loop. So we loop through uh, 2012 uh, to the current year plus one. Uh, we defined current year earlier, um, and then for each year, uh, our data just happened to start in 2012, thus the arbitrary start date, um, and then we'll iterate through each month, and we create a smart month date key, um, and then what we do is essentially this, this loop here, all we're doing is we're going through and we're seeing if the partitions exist at this point. If they exist, then we'll, we're not going to recreate them. If for some reason one was dropped in the middle of our set, we will recreate it. So it's uh, a little bit more robust in terms of changes in the cube, uh, as well as simply adding, hopefully most of the time, just whatever needs to be added. Um, the other thing, like I said with this, is that um, because we're checking every single partition, uh, this will work on a completely unprocessed cube if it's just been deployed. Uh, so next thing, same sort of thing, we loop through the same um, uh, year and month set up to get our smart month date key um, and then we have a much more condensed creation with the AMO so we get a new partition here this is our partition object so we create a new partition uh, we set it to the a concatenation of this uh, of the actual measure group name plus the month date key so we have the object measure group name concatenated with the month date key so we get some good partition names on there uh, mole app storage mode, query binding is set to the original, that sort of um, dummy partition, and in this case we knew that we set it to 1900, so the query originally in our analysis services over here we would have, uh, uh, so where equals 1900 in this case, um, so this would be what our query looks like, and this is what would actually deploy to the server. It's just this one partition, um, and it keeps that definition um, in your analysis services project still. 
once we get to this point, though, we'll replace 1900 with whatever our month date key is for the name and for um, the query. Uh, we set our slice, our, and now we add the partition to the measure group. So we have to make sure that we add it, we make sure that we update it, and then we can process. In this case, we're doing a process data. And once we've done that, the other thing we need to do is we need to update the cube and update the database. And once we're at that point, then the dynamic partition is there. Um, and as you can see in this one, you know, uh, we're making 136 or something, some rather large number of um, month partitions that are very quickly being added to the cube, uh, processed, and then consistently checked to ensure that they're in the process, that they exist, they're processed. And um, that would be the VB example. Like I said, it's a little bit more um, dynamic, probably a little bit more how we would actually see this implemented in a production environment. And with that, hopefully, uh, I think we went fairly quick through the code. Hopefully, you uh, got that. Like I said, I'll put the code and the um, presentation up on my blog. And so you know that is, probably should get that on for you. Um, that is sqldev.blogspot.com. So sqldev at blogspot.com. And um, like I said, that's my personal blog. I'll put the anything up there. And I think that we've got some time now for um, questions, if we have any. There's just a couple additional resources for you here. Great. Thank you, David. Um, we actually don't have any questions. Um, actually, we have one. Okay. And I'm not sure this was from about 10 minutes ago, so I'm not really sure what part of your presentation this was referring to. But sure. what is the purpose to add big number for top XXXXX? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so that, that top number, when we send... Um, our command into analysis services. Analysis services will throw an error if we have an order by. Um, so we kind of sneak around that because the order by will be executed if we have a top statement. And the reason that we're including the large numbers, we just want to make sure that um, since we're not looking for just the top 10, we want the entire record set. We're just putting the top in there so analysis services will not throw an error with the order by clause in the query. Okay, perfect. Well, we don't have any other questions, but thank you, David, for such a great session, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Okay, thanks, everyone. All right, have a great rest of your week. All right, bye. Bye.